Bennett. Here. Okay, and uh, just so you all know, this is a joint meeting of the City Council, the Housing Authority, and the Urban Renewal Agency. Okay, if you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic, to the republic which, exists, exists, which it stands, one nation, one nation indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> justice for all. <laughs> okay, a little bit of an echo, huh? Okay. Councilor Hoy, the meeting agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the special meeting agenda. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. And I'll remember you guys are on some delay, so I'll try to slow down just a little bit. I apologize. Okay, we're going to go to uh, special orders of business. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move City Council suspend rules and adopt temporary procedures for public meetings to address public health issues related to the COVID-19 pandemic, including suspending oral public comment and limiting the number of people at a public meeting to 25 people. Second. Second by Nanky. Okay. Councilor, do you want to speak to your motion? I think the city attorney is getting ready to uh, make okay. comment first. Uh, members of council, Dan Atchison, city attorney. Could I'm you prepared, speak into your mic? I'm prepared to make comments tonight um, unless, unless you don't want me to, so. <laughs> um, we want you to, we'd like great. to know what. So uh, given the restrictions that the, the governor has imposed on limiting meetings to 25 people and the CDC guidance to uh, impose social distancing and maintain a separation of six feet between uh, folks, we've instituted some uh, proposed actions for council meetings. Um, specifically, the, the, the general intent of these rules is to discourage, which is not our practice, but to discourage uh, public from attending the meetings in person in order to use that, employ the social distancing. So these actions are all related to that. So the first one would suspend public comment at council, URA, and SHA commission meetings. So you have council agenda, you have two opportunities. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I cannot hear Dan. I apologize. Let me let me try to speak more closely into the mic. Put it directly in front Pull of you. Right in front of you. It, right up it's close. It's going to touch there my lips, and I'm go. afraid that I'm going to. Get... <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> my apologies. Um, so uh, the first rule suspends um, public comment on council meetings. There's two opportunities: one at the beginning for agenda items, one at the end for non-agenda items. We often. Uh, group those together at the beginning of the meetings. We're recommending you suspend uh, oral public comment. People will continue to be allowed to present as much written comment as they want. They can submit that to city council at city council dot, or city of Salem dot net, um, to the city recorder via email or in person at the city recorder's office. Obviously, we would prefer folks to submit things electronically via email and not come in in person for the social distancing issues. Um, the URA and SHA Commission also have a single public comment opportunity. We're suggesting the rules for all three governing bodies um, be suspended. Um, the second uh, change would be to limit total attendance at meetings to a total of 25 people. That includes uh, the governing body members themselves, uh, staff, and the public. That rule is uh, come down from the state, so it's not so much a rule we need to do, it's what we have to do to comply with state law at this point. Um, we also have a provision that would allow the, uh, the city manager to cancel a meeting of the council, the URA board, or SHA commission, um, notwithstanding the uh, applicable rule that might require more than one meeting a month or a meeting a month. If there's no agenda items and we can delay things, the best thing to do is not meet. Um, with the understanding that I think our current plan is to continue to uh, meet the, the current council schedule of uh, April 13th, March 20, excuse me, March 26th, April 13th and April 27th. Um, we probably are not going to schedule SHA or URA meetings unless there's a, a, an immediate need for an agenda item uh, to be approved at those, at those sessions. Uh, the fourth change would be to uh, um, allow us to the extent feasible to have electronic meetings to meet virtually. That includes all of you um, to provide an opportunity for, uh, for public to access the meeting virtually. Uh, right now you can 
You can use the city's Facebook uh, live stream feed. You can use CCTV's uh, Channel 21 through Comcast or through YouTube to uh, view the meetings and watch it through that way. Public law requires us to make our meetings accessible to the public. So um, I'm, we haven't determined at this point whether simple uh, electronic attendance is okay. We know we need to provide them at least a monitor and, and an audio and a video feed to be able to do that, whether that would be in a separate room. Um, I think we, we can certainly accommodate some members of the public in these chambers. The, the, the fire chief and facilities have been good about taking a look here to see how many people we can allow in up to 25, and we can certainly get up to 25 in here and maintain a six-foot separation. Um, so these rules um, are just essentially des designed to accommodate the social distancing requirements. Uh, Dan, are we expecting, <clears throat> excuse me, any guide, further guidance from the Attorney General's office on this, uh, on the open meetings law and its impact here, or, or are we there? I I don't know yet. Um, I haven't heard anything yet. There's been communications coming out from various state agencies regarding their particular uh, field of interest. Um, the, the one concern that I have is there's timelines that are required for certain uh, quasi-judicial land use decisions. So far, our applicants have been very gracious in agreeing to extensions on those so we can delay hearings to the extent necessary. However, everyone has timelines and there's, there's things that may need to be approved along the way, including Planning Commission and the Historic Landmarks Commission. We can still have hearings. It's just going to be a little clunky and, and folks are going to have to be patient and as we accommodate their, their ability to provide testimony. Yes, Councilor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And as I understand it, the staff is working on a, a more streamlined way to conduct those meetings. Uh, my, my opinion is that we need to make this our new normal for a while, and so we just need to figure out a way to routinize these meetings where people we can conduct our business as needed, because I don't think uh, we're going to be doing this just for a couple of meetings. As Council may be aware, the, the technology in this particular chamber is, is not the, the most modern. So right. we have some limitations based on that. Um, the IT department has been working furiously for internal city meetings as well as trying to find a better solution to have uh, public meetings more accessible virtually. Okay. Yes, Councillor Nordyke. Thank you. So to be clear, written comments are still okay, and anyone can submit written comments to any city meeting, right? Correct. Okay. And... I would caution us against canceling meetings because, you know, we still need to conduct the business of the city. There are a lot of ongoing projects, particularly that impact our vulnerable populations, Salem Housing Authority, our urban renewal areas. Those impact a lot of areas that have ongoing projects. So I would not want us to cancel meetings if there's a way to simply arrange them to be conducted by phone. Uh, in my profession, we conduct hearings and meetings by phone all the time. It's about identifying and acquiring the appropriate teleconferencing software. Of course, I don't know what the city's current capacities are, and I, I'm sure that the IT department is working furiously, but I think that it's important, especially in times of crisis, to have as much normalcy as possible moving forward. Continue trying to conduct business as best you can, even if it just means that people are appearing by phone instead of in person. I think that it does make sense for us to move forward that way in order to ensure everyone's oh, safety. Sorry. But let's just try and find as many ways as possible to conduct these meetings by phone or by video so that the business of the city can continue. Yeah, good. good. Thank you, Councillor. That's really good advice. Councillor Leon. Um, without echoing um, Councillor Hoy and Councillor Nordyke, I also want to make sure that we continue having our city council meetings because you know, we are the face of the, the leadership of Salem, so we have to be here and be present, whether it's face-to-face -face or by video or by telephone call, because we are the the face of the leadership, so we have to be present. And if we're not present, what does that say about our leadership? Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Nanke. Thank you, yes. And I, uh, I'm i sure situations will come upon us here because this is kind of a, a new thing for everyone where we're actually going to have to respond to, to several things. I know in a lot of my um, meetings outside of this chamber, we've, we've spoken of doing more electronic type meetings and so in that respect this may actually help people um, get all of those systems in place that can uh, 
minimize the amount of time that people are either wasting uh, traveling between locations, uh, drop emissions from vehicles as well. Okay. So um, I, I think it's a, a wonderful opportunity um, in, the, in the face Tom of the, Anderson, the hardship. Man. Councilor Anderson. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, I'm having a little trouble hearing, but I gather the import of what everyone has said is we do not, we're not that interested in canceling meetings because we still have a city to run and we're going to have a whole lot more uh, pressing uh, current issues. So I join the rest of the council. I also would hope that there is some way uh, for us to honor the 25 person limit in the council chambers, but then also have some sort of video hookup to the uh, municipal court or someplace else where people can actually be there and speak through some sort of video hookup to the council uh, when appropriate. Thank you, and I, I believe that works underway is taking a look at how that's going to work, Councillor, so thank you. Anyone else? Okay, ready to vote? Oh, oh, sorry. Who is it? Thanks. I just wanted, I, I just wanted to echo. Councillor Kayser, is that you? Yes. Okay. Is. Thank you. I just wanted to echo everyone's comment um, and to add that if there is anything, and this might be beyond the scope, but if there is anything that we can do to delegate to the city manager, I'm thinking very specifically about applying for grants or MOU type things that are very mundane routine actions of the council that we could perhaps delegate those to the city manager so that those things get removed off of our agenda because that's a lot of our day-to-day -day business and really free up the business that is important and is uh, uh, land use or, or other great policy decisions. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Atchison, could you speak to that, uh, the extent that we can delegate to the mayor? Excuse me, to the manager. You, you, you have a broad authority to, to delegate authority to the city manager. The city manager al already has relatively broad authority okay. as the city's administrator. There's certain items like IGAs, intergovernmental agreements, that by state law require the governing body to approve. However, right. the governing body can say we delegate that to the city manager. So there's, there are a range of things you can do. I wasn't clear from the counselor whether she's talking specifically to items relative to the COVID-19 pandemic or just in general? I think, I think what I heard the counselor talking about was the general almost routine business uh, grant writing, grant applications and uh, I think were her examples. Counselor, do you want to speak further to that? Yes, and, and that's correct. I think um, anything, I, I, I think both for this, um, this incident for COVID-19 and then for uh, on a perhaps just in another uh, on, a, on a temporary basis for other routine types of things that are not controversial that is just simply requires council approval but um, that we could find those items to delegate okay we I will uh, I'm sure the city attorney will work that out and make sure that it, to the extent possible will delegate and often we can have the manager make decisions being affirmed at our next council meeting, things like that, that um, should make Anderson, that work well. Who is that? Tom Anderson. Tom, go ahead. Yes, thanks. Uh, uh, as part of the cooperative effort, I will try to not uh, pull anything on the <laughs> Hey. We don't want to put any burdens on anyone, so. Yeah, it, it seems to me, and again, this is up to the city attorney, that there might be some way to sort of electronically for the council to say no objection to the consent agenda or something like that. Uh, and that would be a way maybe to delegate if no one at the council objects to the consent agenda electronically, then uh, the that means we delegated the authority to the manager to, to proceed under the consent agenda. Well, we'll having put together a memo to us and, and discuss it with the manager and, and members of the council to see kind of how far we want to go with, uh, with that delegation. But I, I think that you understand what the, what the issue is. That manager, you also? Yes. Okay. Very good. Mr. Yes. Mr. Mayor, just in that line, if, if I may, if no one, because the uh, council president queries counselors or they contact him regarding any polls, 
Um, it might be to where we affirm if we have not uh, actually uh, had the desire to pull something that then staff that may be associated with something on the consent calendar wouldn't necessarily have to to come to chambers ready to answer questions. Yeah, I, I think we'll let the uh, let Mr. Atchison, yeah. if you don't mind, I think we'll let Mr. Atchison kind of pull together how this might look and, and see how that looks and make sure we see it along the way. Because uh, I think there'll be, there's sensitivities to all of these yes. issues for counselors. Each of these issues are important, uh, whether it's on the consent calendar. Or, Mr. Uh, Mayor, if I may, just a, a, a quick follow up to Councilor Nanke's point, and that is as part of the effort to uh, maintain the no more than 25 to allow uh, public uh, to attend, I have instructed staff to not have uh, non-essential staff attend council meetings. So having that that advance uh, uh, notice, if you will, of councilor interest in issues, such as what's occurring now uh, sporadically uh, through the council president's efforts would, would be very helpful. So we could be responsive to you as individual elected officials and as necessary responsive to the entire uh, city council while again protecting or, or trying to maintain uh, as appropriate available city seating uh, uh, for, for the public. Okay. Mr. Mayor, if I could just make one Yes, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to note for our colleagues on the phone, I count a total of 15 people in the room right now, unless there are staff members hiding behind the pillars, which they occasionally do. Uh, and there are no members of the public, so that's uh, five members of council and the rest are staff. So just FYI for those on the phone. Okay. Are we ready to vote then? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All, aye. Opposed. aye. All opposed. Motion passes. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we adopt resolution number 2020-18, declaring a state of emergency within the city of Salem related to the COVID-19 pandemic. Second. Second by Nanke. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in a nutshell, this uh, emergency declaration authorizes the city manager to issue order and take other necessary steps to implement the declaration. It prohibits public gatherings in public places and restricts public spaces to active pedestrian use and suspends the public camping prohibition in all unimproved areas in Wallace Marine and Cascade Gateway parks. Public space is defined to mean the Salem Civic Center, publicly owned right away, including sidewalks and landscape strips and city parks. Public gathering is defined to mean any assembly of two or more people remaining in the same area for 10 minutes or more. The allowance for public camping in unimproved areas of Wallace Marine and Cascade Gateway has the following requirements. A campsite may have up to 10 people, and a campsite must be separated by at least 50 feet from each other and any improved area within the park or abutting properties. The Mid Willamette Valley Community Action Agency uh, has recommended that groups camping on sidewalks be required to disperse in order to protect the health of the individuals and help mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Arches has indicated they will provide tents and sleeping bags for anyone displaced from public sidewalks as a result of this action. And I'd like to read into the record a letter from Jimmy Jones, the executive director of the Community Action Agency. Thank you. He wrote this today, uh, stated 17 March 2020, Dear Mr. Powers, thank you for a copy of the proposed City of Salem Resolution 2020-18 concerning an emergency declaration over the COVID-19 pandemic and the homeless population of our community. The agency follows the advice and best practices for homeless services as outlined by the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development, the Centers for Disease Control, the Oregon Health Authority, and other public agencies and homeless service networks. In this current public health crisis, the community should avoid large concentrations of the homeless population where they cannot hope to practice good hygiene. Our homeless should, go, should also be able to shelter themselves in tents so they can self-quarantine when they are sick. Allowing the homeless to camp in Wallace Marine and in Cascade Gateway is the best of limited options available to the city. Given the current public health conditions in the downtown and the high probability of COVID-19 community spread among our homeless neighbors. If the council adopts resolution 2020-18, community action will provide any homeless person needing to relocate to another part of town with a tent, sleeping bag, and other camping equipment through our Arches Day Center at 615 Commercial Street. 
Thank you for the city's concern for our homeless neighbors and your continued commitment to keep them safe and healthy through these difficult times. Yours respectfully, Jimmy Jones, Executive Director. Thank you. Any discussion? Yes, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just had a few follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. um, the first one has to do with the relocation of the uh, unsheltered community. Or is it going to be done in a way that is humanely and, and um, trauma-informed? Because remember, when we had moved them initially, it was a lot of trauma. So how are we going to make sure that when we're moving them to the <laughs> to the to the <laughs> to the new locations that we're giving them the support and the time that they need to take what they uh, their their materials and go to arches and then go to the designated um, spaces? That's my first question. Uh, it's, it's certainly, our efforts will be coordinated with the, the Salem Housing Authority and and arches uh, uh, staff who are experienced in in working with individuals who are unsheltered, uh, working in a way that provides some accommodation while though recognizing we are in a crisis uh, we are in a pandemic and there will be a need for for people to to uh, you know, leave, leave the sidewalks for people to to not congregate in ways that endanger their own health or the community's health as far as specific uh, uh, approaches the specific methods uh, perhaps police chief Moore can can address how we have our, our department has worked with uh, unsheltered individuals in the past. But again, this is a diff this is a new this is a new normal for us as far as being very responsive to the public health crisis that we're being told exists by by all of the national and state public health authorities and, and experts. Mayor, counselors, thank you. Jerry Moore, Chief of Police. Uh, this is new territory for us as well. Uh, every time or any time we have actually had the need to move uh, some of the unsheltered folks, we have always uh, included our social service agencies and um, uh, Salem Housing. Uh, of course, our ultimate goal w during those contacts is to see if they would accept uh, some sort of assistance. Uh, but um, if they uh, decline, we will certainly um, rely on uh, arches and the housing authority to help us with those moves. Um, I I would I would hazard to say that we would certainly be uh, uh, try to provide whatever assistance we can, but we are as a police department are not set up to help people move or uh, 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 move their property and such. Thank you. Um, so my my second question as. As people may have seen already in the news, the governor just recently um, issued a notice that there'll be no public schools um, that be extended until April 28th. And um, hopefully the school districts will be extending their, their grab-and-go lunches, but that's on the school districts at this point. Um, but we're also now experiencing um, families who are going to have to stay home or find other child care means for children that normally would be in schools. Um, and there's also families who might have to stay home or lose their jobs. Is there anything that we as a city can do regarding um, preventing evictions from occurring for non-payment of rent? I mean, I don't know if that is something that's within our capacity as city councilors. Right. I'm going to call on the city attorney uh, to kind of help us through that one. Dan Atchison, city attorney. So um, I, I became aware of uh, Portland and Multnomah County's declaration this afternoon. Um, I did note in the materials that I had read that the Portland city attorney's office commented that they're looking into the specific laws to see what authority the city of Portland has to actually um, uh, apply what the, what was said in the declaration. And we're in the same boat. So I know there are some state laws that um, uh, limit what local jurisdictions can do regarding landlord-tenant relations, and those would still apply even if we were to incorporate something like this in, a, in an emergency declaration. So um, as part of a, a report back to council, um, I, I'll, I can let you know what, what kind of options we have within the law. Thank you. Um, so another, um, just more of a comment versus a question. Sure. So um, folks might have noticed or saw the news that the Church of the Park is has closed down. Um, they're not available anymore because of the spacing issues and, and being in compliance with the new um, declaration by the governor. 
Um, so um, the, there's two other, two or a few other locations that will be open, but they are hurting for volunteers. So if there's anybody in our community, if you're able to volunteer at those centers and be able to provide support to the community so that those shelters can remain open, it would be very much appreciated, especially within the communities that are going to be really hurting during this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Hopefully, uh, <clears throat> this declaration will assist uh, the uh, Church in the Park uh, with their spacing issues by allowing uh, camping out in that particular area. So we are trying to balance this, I think, with the needs of the various groups. Uh, I know also I want to just mention to you there are other uh, nonprofit organizations that I've talked with about uh, uh, potentially developing child care options available and so we'll be as those develop I think people are particularly interested in our first responders and in health care workers but we'll be looking I think and working with them on a broader issues of child care as people uh, deal with employment problems and child care issues with the schools closing for that period so uh, we'll stay on top of that and try to keep you informed as we're uh, as we get information, I think we'll we'll hear about it as this develops. Um, uh, thank you. Um, I also have actually one more comment. I'm sorry. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> um, so, what about our our local businesses? I mean, they're also going to be impacted. I mean, right now, if um, for our restaurants and bars, they're only allowed to do delivery or or takeout. So, um, in what ways are we going to try and support those um, those businesses because they're going to be severely impacted as well? Yeah, again, the city's resources are limited. Our, our primary ways of assisting businesses are through our urban renewal areas and the urban renewal grants, which are not citywide. Uh, for the downtown specifically, uh, Director Rutherford uh, has uh, implemented some, some parking changes that we hope will assist with the new takeout uh, requirement. And, and, and Kristen can provide more, more detail on that and, and some, other, some other considerations that we have been discussing over the past several days. Kristen Rutherford, Tom Urban Anderson, Development Mr. Director. Mayor. Okay. Oh. Go sorry, ahead. Did Councilor Anderson have a... Go ahead. Quick? Okay. Um, so uh, as sorry. the city manager oh, mentioned... I interrupted Councilor Leung. If you want to go ahead, that's fine with me. Would you, would you mind, Councilor, if we let... Uh, uh, Director Rutherford to answer her question and then I'll call sure. on you. Okay, thank you. No, not at all. So we have identified several spots within the downtown core where there's no off-street parking next to the businesses that we can designate for 15-minute um, to-go or take-out spaces. We're in the process of getting signs made and uh, trying to get those installed as quickly as we can, hopefully before the end of this week so that uh, we'll have a couple of spots on most blocks throughout the downtown, and but particularly in those blocks where there are restaurants to help support those businesses. Um, the Pretty much everywhere else in the community, um, the restaurants have off-street parking. Uh, there may be some areas out on State Street that we will also look at extending something like this to where we've got on-street paid parking. Um, we also have received guidance within the last couple of business days from HUD where they are expanding some flexibility impacted. Uh, we still have to do some research to find out what this means because it would involve some plan amendments and there are public notice and public hearing requirements that go along with that and we're not sure um, really how we're going to address the public outreach and that public input process with the kinds of limitations that we're facing right now. Uh, so we have some additional research to, to do there, but that may be another opportunity for some resources that we could use to help our businesses. Councilor, we also are in touch with our federal delegation. We've been watching, like everyone else, watching the national uh, discussion of this, and, and there clearly are programs developing at the federal level to deal with small businesses, and we'll be uh, talking uh, uh, tomorrow and the next day with our federal uh, delegation or their representatives about how those programs will work and, and what role we can play in assisting and getting those funds into the community as rapidly as possible. Uh, it'd be too bad to have to wait for the federal government to write a check to save a local small business if there's a way for us to be a more rapid conduit of that. So we'll, we're going to stay right on top of that. That clearly is one of the uh, outcomes of this current situation. We've got to 
really keep track of. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, did you have anything further for Ms. Rutherford? Um, I'm not sure if this is actually a question for you or maybe it's for somebody else. Um, as, as you know, within our community, we have a lot of elderly as well. Um, is there a way that we're making sure that we're taking care of our community? I mean, they may be impacted the most or even, um, again, people with um, um, What's uh, uh, people who have uh, vulnerable um, health issues. Are, are we, is there a way we as a city can ensure that we, we are helping those individuals to the best of our ability? I can't address that broadly citywide. I can speak to what the housing authority is doing and the housing authority for their properties has implemented measures um, to help with our seniors and those that may be more medically fragile. And they're currently trying to um, develop some delivery resources with local grocery stores so that we can curtail the, the uh, frequency that our seniors would have to go to the store and they could have products delivered to them instead. So that's something that in the last two days they've uh, been trying to establish. And, and, for our, broadly, oh, excuse no. me. and for our center 50 plus for the congregate meals that are no longer uh, available at center 50 plus, uh, we are offering through the great partnership of the Marion Polk Food Share either a pickup uh, option for those meals or if uh, residents are unable to uh, travel to Center 50 Plus, the Meals on Wheels program is delivering those to, to uh, uh, people who had been uh, participating in the congregate meals at Center 50 Plus. Thank you. Okay. If, if Thank I you. could add to that, I think both those organizations are seeking volunteers. Thank you very much. Mr. Walsh, did you want to speak to these questions? No, sir, they addressed it all. Okay, okay, very good. Councilor Anderson. Thank you very much. A couple comments and questions, and then I'm actually going to make an amendment to the resolution. First uh, uh, question is, I'm looking at section 5C, uh, which the second sentence, this is on page two, it says loitering on public sidewalks and landscape strips is prohibited. And I guess I'm asking the city attorney, I presume we, is that, that's already in the city code, is it not? Uh, Dan Atchison, city attorney. Actually, no, uh, loitering was removed from the city code um, probably about three years ago. Um, okay. So, so the reason it's added in here is just to provide, try to provide some clarity in, in stating what the restriction is in different ways. Look, I appreciate that, Mr. Atkinson, and I understand now why it's in there. Uh, my concern is that, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been going around and around on sit lie, and uh, I understand why we're doing what we're doing now, but it kind of has the practical effect of, of uh, enacting a sit lie ordinance, which is appropriate, uh, uh, the equivalent of a sit lie ordinance, which is appropriate under the medical emergencies we're having right now, I would just hope that um, uh, uh, we could review this at the next city council meeting. I know you'll be giving us reports. The second comment I have is, uh, our question too, is that the next council meeting we were going to be looking at the plans for Marion Park and how we would have a tent there. And, and uh, I'm sure that those plans are still in progress, but I would also uh, uh, suspect that uh, we're going to have to have the same issue with camping, um, you know, so many feet apart and the uh, distancing and all that stuff. So I would hope we could get a, a report back at that point. Now, uh, I'm going to, I'd like to, to make an amendment, and I'm looking at uh, section five, subsection D, that says gatherings of two or more people are hereby prohibited right. in or on any public space, and, um, and also the definition section in A sub uh, little, double little I. I would have to say that that seems too low for me, um, you know, and I would move, therefore I move to amend um, Section 5B uh, to say gatherings of four or more people. 
So you're, would you again describe exactly where you are? Are you on 5A2 or is that public yes, gathering I'm on, definition? I'm on, I'm on 5D, which is where they say gatherings of two or more people are hereby prohibited in any public space. And then in the definition section above in 5A, it defines public gathering okay. as two or more people. And I would like to change in both section A and in section B, the, the number two to the number four. Second. Second by Osik. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to Councilor Anderson's amendment, uh, this is actually a conversation I also had earlier today with the city attorney about, you know, why two. And, um, he reminded me that what we're saying here is just the, the gathering in one place for an extended period of time. So people can still walk together. They can still move about together. They just are, this just prohibits them from uh, gathering for over 10 minutes in one place. And I, and I think that the idea here is to enact the guidelines that we've been receiving from the state and federal government. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, Councilor Kayser. Yes. Thank you. Uh, well, I appreciate the motion. I am not going to support it uh, for the reasons that Councilor Hoy just explained. This motion is trying to get at gatherings of people, uh, and they can be moving in transit, but we do not want groups of people hanging out together um, on our public spaces because that is what's going to cause transmission of this virus. It doesn't really matter if it's two or four or ten, even between one person to another person, this stuff transmits. So if we permit four or more people, um, if basically we permit any more than one person to gather, we're risking exposure to other groups of people, and then we don't have any way to enforce it. So I, I am not going to support this amendment. Okay. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, who's that? Uh, Anderson. I'm going to uh, call on, uh, do you want to answer her? Is that what you're doing, Tom? Yeah, I, 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 I just want to speak in support of the motion. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I apologize. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. We're doing the best we can in this awkward situation, which I suppose you can extrapolate to the entire situation. Let me give you an example that concerns me. I understand exactly if we're all walking down the street in a group of, you know, five people, uh, uh, that, that is not what the intent of the motion is. But let me give you an example from last Friday. I had one of the last court hearings, I think, in circuit court at 3.30 on Friday, and I met my two clients and the mother of a client outside uh, of outside the Marion County Courthouse. And we talked for about 10 or 15 minutes because there was really no place in the courthouse to meet. And uh, under the rules that we say here, uh, I wouldn't have been in violation of that and the other people. So yeah. I can appreciate the effect, but I also appreciate Councilor Kayser saying it doesn't make any difference if it's two or four or 10 because for Two people, there's always the contact, the potential for one-on-one -on -one contact. So, uh, I will. Uh, I'm still going to go ahead and ask for a vote on the motion, and I will support it. Okay, Councilor Leon. Um, I just had one extra follow-up question to the campsites. Um, are there going to be this? This is off the. Could, oh. If you don't mind, uh, uh, take it separately, and uh, we'll. we'll continue with his motion and then I'll call on you. Okay, I understand what you're asking. Nanki, did you want, no? This is, Councilor Hoy. This is Councilor Kayser. Just sec. Councilor Hoy. Councilor Hoy is gonna talk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just also wanted to remind uh, my colleagues in case it wasn't clear that this uh, declaration is good through April 28th at this point. So it's this is a very temporary to get us through this situation. We're trying to model behavior that people need to to keep themselves safe and by by extension keep the community safe. On this way, on my way to this very meeting, I witnessed probably 12 people gathered at the uh, at the downtown transit center 
youths playing. I don't know what all they were doing, but there were a, a big number of folks not um, not practicing social distancing, yeah. and we need to we need this tool to help keep the community safe, and that's the whole point of this thing. Is we're just trying to to uh, keep the community safe, and that's the bottom line, right? Yeah, here. I, I think we're. Uh, it's the. I think it's March twenty eighth rather than April. Or is April. it April twenty eighth? April twenty eighth. The concept uh, in this uh, in this and in the state guidance on this and the national guidance is we're trying to uh, uh, severely limit exposure of individuals to each other to the extent it can possibly done be done through our uh, work. Uh, to avoid uh, having uh, an inundation of people uh, that have contracted this. Tom, I'd suggest you get tested after meeting uh, with those three other people, but that'd be just me. Uh, but, but I think that's the concept, is that you, we are really trying over the next few weeks to at, at the governor's uh, request, and, and uh, more than request, to get this under control as fast as we can. And uh, so there are going to be, like we're seeing with our meetings, we're gonna see some difficulties. And I'm sure in terms of conversation and gathering, you know, small group conversation, it's not gonna be the greatest thing ever. That's why they invented the cell phone, I think, in some cases. So I, I just suggest that this is, is really a, a well-planned uh, approach to absolutely put us ahead of the game in terms of limiting contact uh, that could result in people getting sick. We're, we're really gotta be serious about this, and that's, I think, what we're doing. Councilor Kayser. Thank you, uh, and, and I agree, uh, Mr. Mayor, with your comments as well as Councillor Hoyt. And just to clarify, in Section 8, it does specify that this would uh, terminate on April 28th, uh, a few weeks from now. And, and I just want to reiterate that um, I am completely expecting the state, even, even perhaps the federal government, to start issuing more stringent guidelines yeah. about meetings. And we're already seeing this in San Francisco and I believe in other states where people are being told to shelter in place and where curfews are going into effect. I don't think this might seem drastic to some people. I don't think it's going to be out of the ordinary in the very near future. Um, and I think gatherings of, of people or two or more, just we can't, we can't have that right now. We have to do what we can with the resources we have to do the best we can to pr provide safety for our community. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, are we ready to vote then? On the amendment. On the amendment. On the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. All opposed? Nay. No. Aye. Oops. Uh, Osik, are you opposed? You're everyone else is opposed. Have I got that right? Tom's alone is in support of his amendment? Okay, one yes on the amendment. Okay, now we're back to the main motion. Councillor Leon. Thank you. Um, just wanted to uh, clarify uh, on the resolution on, on the one, two, three, four, the fourth whereas. Um, will that be updated for where the governor ordered all public schools to be closed until April 28th um, in okay. the final one? Yes, thank okay. you. We can update that okay. whereas. Okay, and then my second question is for those individuals who are um, who are going to be in the campgrounds. Um, are we going to be providing any porta potties or any garbage pickup or garbage bags um, for those people in, the, in those areas? At, at this time, we are not planning any portable toilets. Uh, we would be monitoring uh, camping areas to to try to. Uh, enforced to try to maintain that separation that is in in the uh, in the order uh, as the experience uh, unfolds uh, certainly accommodations could be made for some some refuse uh, or removal could we count on you then to be there will be monitoring going on uh, we I know Councillor Hoy and I asked about a washing station and perhaps going ahead with uh, portable toilets at Marion Square, figuring out some ways to accommodate uh, just basic hygiene. Oh, certainly, and, and at, the, at the camp 
at the, excuse me, the, the parks that are in the order, uh, there are restrooms available uh, during the hours of, of the park. And uh, yes, I am uh, not, not to uh, divert too much uh, uh, focus from tonight's uh, agenda item, but on the agenda for your next meeting is second reading of, of the, the sit lie ordinance and, and per the, the directives from the governor and from uh, the public health authorities at this time my recommendation is not going to include uh, the large covering or tent. It will however include proceeding with the portable toilets and the uh, restroom plan uh, that, that involved the Portland loop. I, I think, uh, Councillor Fion, I think uh, appreciating your suggestion, you're going to want to hear about how the basic health uh, hygiene issues are being addressed during this, uh, this work. So hopefully we can have a re at least a report, if not some recommendations on how we're handling this. Yes, this is, this is uh, well, we have some past experience regarding uh, camping in our, our parks. This is a, a new a new normal uh, for, for us and, and certainly we can provide information to, to council, uh, certainly information as well as if, if there are uh, changes that require council action, we'll, we'll get those before you. I, I also just, uh, this is just me, not the manager here talking, but uh, I, I would fully expect that we're going to see as time passes and recommendations from the uh, uh, county, state, and federal government change because they're they're changing. I watched them change hourly yesterday from the governor uh, in detail that we will be probably going through similar uh, actions ourselves as as the evolving uh, response to the to the uh, pandemic develops. So I think we have a responsibility to maintain the, just the kind of issues uh, remain observant of just the kinds of issues you described, Councillor. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do have actually one more follow-up too now. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's the last one, promise. Um, so under when we were talking about gatherings of two or more people, so in the campgrounds, let's say that there's a group of three who all camp together. Are we going to be separating them or in that particular instance? Councillor, or Mr. Atchison. Um, uh, Council Dan Atchison, City Attorney, if you refer to Section 6 on page 2 of the resolution, um, the, the campsites, you can, we're allowing up to 10 people per campsite. So uh, each, each camp would be up to 10 people and then they'd be separated by 50 feet between another potential camp. So it's observing that 10 person situation, I think, is what you're doing at, at recommendation. and. But, I mean, I assume that if we get guidance that should be five, we may actually have to go in and work with folks about breaking them into even smaller groups if that's possible. I mean, I expect this to be fairly flexible over time as we work our way through this. Am I missing something here? No, you're not. I think the whole uh, COVID-19, uh, particularly for uh, vulnerable members of our community, is, is going to be an evolving Okay. Uh, a situation that will require uh, good communication, that will require updates to council and the community. Our, our intent with the specifics in this order are to uh, acknowledge and, and try to help the need for disbursement while not allowing uh, a, a recreation of some of the, the campsites that have occurred in our uh, city parks over the years. Thank you. Councilor Nanke. Yes, thank you. And, and thank you for those comments, uh, Mr. Manager. I'd received an email earlier today from the chair of Semkin Neighborhood Association regarding a 10 camp already starting to develop in Cascade Gateways. And I was trying to find it in my city email and it, it wasn't there. He actually had sent it to my personal email as well as to Councilor uh -huh. Anderson. Uh, and so I will forward that into my um, city email so that it on record as well. But a uh, question on the, the two persons, and there's an exclusion or an exception in there regarding um, sitting on a park bench. And I was just curious as to what the difference is between you know, three people standing on a sidewalk talking to each other or three people sitting on a bench talking to each other for an extended period of time. I think only Mr. Atchison can answer that question. 
and maybe not even Mr. Anderson. <laughs> um, the general gist is that. Mind, Could you get close to your mic? My apologies. Um, we're trying to find some reasonable exceptions to what is a rather drastic measure. Um, the assumption that uh, there's limited park benches available in parks and sidewalks, and this allows folks uh, some ability to, to sit down while they're walking. What does this do with sidewalk cafe or sidewalk use by cafes? Eat uh, fast. Eating outside. This, this uh, restriction would apply to sidewalk cafes as well. Okay. So it, it's everybody. This, is it, this, this has to be applied uniformly. Yep. I know the, the impact on this may be felt most by the folks who are the unsheltered who are on our city sidewalks and whatnot, but this will be applied uniformly. It applies to everyone. Good. Okay. Thank you. Constantly. And if I can just follow up on that. Uh, and it's, it's not so much inherent to the, uh, the motion on the floor, but it is to an extent because we also have severe economic um, tragedies happening around us, and we've been getting several emails today on that as well, and hopefully we will be able to look at some opportunities yep. to help both businesses with uh, no fee increases for a certain amount of time, maybe for residential properties, some kind of a, uh, a reduction of water, sewer, storm, billing for a month, something to just help economically. The federal government has been looking at trying to somehow infuse cash back down, but if we could, depending on what our reserves are and what the actual revenue generation from that may be, just to start looking for some of those options as well to help people who are suffering. I, I think we'll look at a broad economic, uh, but uh, I, I think right now we'll be uh, working closely with uh, Ms. Rutherford and her programs as well as with our federal and, and that we're clearly going to have, uh, it appears, a special session and uh, we will be focused on that. We're still going to be looking for that low barrier shelter Correct. money, for added money for a navigation center. Those are the kinds of things that with this, with this situation, if we had them in place, this would be a very different discussion. Uh, so. I think it's really important that we keep our eye on what our goals look like and the strategy we've had for the past uh, several years in terms of getting people housed. I hope as you, they're talking with uh, folks about uh, camping in the park, they're also saying if we have HRAP housing available and if we have other kinds, and I'm sure they will, various kinds of housing. Uh, that our constant goal is to get people into housing first with wraparound programs. And so uh, I think this is, this is gonna be a, a, a very interesting uh, experience. Councilor Nordyke. Thank you, Mayor Bennett. So I have several comments because there are several different topics related to this, but I'll try to be concise. Um, first of all, I want to applaud the city. We are not turning off anyone's water right now, as I understand it. And I incredibly appreciate that because, as Councillor Nanke pointed out, there are going to be economic disasters as a fallout of this. So anything we can do to support folks with their utilities and their housing would be essential because the last thing we need are even more folks on the streets right now, even more folks who are in that tenuous position where they could be exposed to the virus. Secondly, I fully support having our city attorney conduct the research on whether the city itself can do anything regarding evictions. I know that we have some affordable housing in the area that the city is very much involved in. So what can we do to support folks so that they are not evicted at this time? And that dovetails with how we support our businesses and our workers right now. I know that a number of businesses in the restaurant industry are concerning layoffs or have already laid people off. The unemployment office is already getting overwhelmed with unemployment claims relating to the coronavirus. So I urge folks to contact the legislature as I have to demand an economic stimulus package. We really need this to support our local businesses, to support our workers, to support the economic damage from this. And, you know, the city has only limited resources to carry out an economic stimulus of some kind. It's time for the state and the feds to step up because we really, really need our help nationally. 
Also, I strongly encourage if folks do need to be quarantined, if you're an employee and you're working for the city or if you're working anywhere in town and you need to take leave because you feel you're developing symptoms, I urge all of our employers to provide that paid leave. But for this crisis, we expected everyone to have business as usual. We had our budgets planned for allowing folks to be doing their job and carrying out those functions. So we don't want to make matters worse by putting people on unpaid leave if they're already in the budget to be receiving that paid leave. Next, I'd like to point out I very much appreciate Councilor Leun's comments. We need porta potties, garbage service, and hand washing stations for these camping areas. You can spread the tr disease not just through person-to-person -person contact, but by touching surfaces in common. So having hand washing, washing your hands as much as possible, having access to garbage, having access to porta potties, all those things will also help flatten the curve. Um, next, two more points I'd like to make. I volunteered at an Arches warming shelter last night. If you are symptom free and under the age of 50, I strongly encourage you to, speak, to be supporting our warming shelters at a time like this. These shelters are beacons of hope right now. And I can tell you there were a lot of smiles inside that shelter last night. There are a lot of folks who are so grateful to have some place warm and dry and safe to be during this time frame. We had a gentleman come in and he couldn't wait to tell us volunteers that he had just gotten a job at McDonald's. So there are signs of hope in crisis and I urge you to find those beacons of hope wherever you can because they are out there. I do support Meals on Wheels and if you're interested in volunteering for that and any other number of volunteer organizations right now, now is the time. And last but not least, um, I encourage folks to visit the Mental Health America website. As a mental health advocate myself, I began working with busy professionals who are extremely stressed out from running their business, from having the demands of their job, having the responsibilities that you have as a professional. And I am sure that people right now are struggling with anxiety, and PTSD and other mental health symptoms from the coronavirus. So there are resources available online at Mental Health America and other providers. It's okay and I understand if folks out there are anxious. It's okay and I understand if you are struggling and especially if you don't want to admit to it because a lot of people do not want to admit that they are struggling emotionally with this unprecedented situation that we're in. But that stigma often means that folks don't get help when they need it. So don't be afraid to reach out. Reach out to your friends, reach out to a counselor, just reach out. Because while we're supposed to be on lockdown, I know that connection is the antidote. So now is the time to engage with your friends and your family online or by phone or by video chat. But whatever you do, don't completely shut down in this situation. Stay connected and stay hopeful. That's all I have. Thank you, Councillor. Tom Anderson, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Anderson. Thank you. I, I uh, have had a little trouble hearing the uh, Councillor Nanke and the city attorney, but I gather from Councillor Nordyke's comments that one of the items that the city attorney will be coming back is how we deal with economic pressures. And I agree with Councillor Nanke that we need to look at the businesses but I also uh, uh, think that we need to look at the employees of the businesses, especially of the service industry folks. And I will point out that uh, uh, up in Portland and Multnomah County, um, there was uh, there is uh, either an ordinance or a resolution passed about uh, being unable to evict tenants who can't pay rent due to COVID-19. And I would hope that the city attorney and staff would research that and maybe we could discuss that potential um, uh, at uh, our next council meeting. Yeah, the, uh, we've talked about that, Councilor. Sorry it didn't come through clearly that uh, the city attorney will be examining those. Our economic measures are being handled right now by uh, Kristen Rutherford, uh, 
So we'll be, and then we'll be working with both our federal and our state delegations relative to programs that they'll uh, have an opportunity to move and how best we can interact with those. So I think we'll be answering all those questions as this is, as this evolves and we get uh, uh, really significantly more information. It's surprising at this point uh, where you do hit holes of information in, in what's going on around this. So we'll be, I think we will be talking about this at every meeting we have until uh, somebody declares the pandemic over. Uh, this will be one of those topics and, and certainly the kinds of issues uh, are raised relative to all employees, including our own, a whole range of discussions are gonna be going on. Uh, if I may, I want to just add to the discussion of this because I, I want to be real clear in terms of the city's role at this point and the things the city has been doing. Uh, often it isn't always clear to folks just how much is going on down here that the city manager and his staff are working with. Uh, Center 50 Plus was closed today. Uh, the meals and I, the it was shared that the uh, meals program is still underway with Meals on Wheels, uh, but uh, that program was closed just to ensure the safety of the many, many hundreds of people that use that facility. The public library was closed yesterday. Uh, both, both of the public libraries were closed by the city. Uh, staff, as was mentioned, has identified uh, at least 19 locations downtown to be converted to 15-minute parking to facilitate uh, restaurant takeout customers. City offices, unlike many cities in the state, are remaining open. Uh, we will continue to monitor that, but uh, folks, I, I hope, uh, in their own sense of safety, will take a real good look at the variety of things you can do uh, in uh, doing business with the city online. There's just a whole range of ways not to come to City Hall and accomplish your goals. Uh, in, the, in deference to our, the safety of our first responders, our fire stations, uh, I believe, have been closed to public coming in. Um, and the police have suspended their ride-along programs. And I, the police academy, do I, or what, your uh, community activity uh, in that area. Um, wherever feasible, our departments have implemented methods to provide social distancing. Meetings here have been canceled. Uh, I looked at my own calendar yesterday and it cleared very rapidly uh, and then filled up with some new stuff, uh, which is always surprising. Um, but we're also looking at staggered schedules, half day of work, half day at home, and a great deal of working from home. Uh, if, if I may, Mayor, on. sorry to interrupt, Steve Power, City Manager, just to give you an idea of how quickly this is moving, uh, some of those verbs that the mayor has uh, just used are now past tense, where we have implemented staggered scheduling, we do have employees working from home, uh, the evaluation is over, uh, and we are implementing where we can, uh, employees working from home, dispatching from home, if they're field uh, employees, if field responsibilities, or the, the, the staggered schedules. Great, great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. If I hit any others that you're not looking at anymore, you're just doing, give me a yell here. Uh, public records request fees under $50 are being waived. We're not turning off water service where people uh, normally would run into that. Uh, we are working and have talked with PGE. They're not uh, discontinuing service. Northwest Natural Gas is not dis discontinuing service. Uh, I mean, the list just goes on as uh, the community in its various utilities and services uh, progress. We are being very careful about the uh, health and safety of key personnel in our water and wastewater departments, uh, making sure we have certified people always available and healthy uh, on staff to run those functions. So uh, as we uh, look at city actions, I think we can be really uh, proud of the work being done by the city manager and his staff uh, to keep this city absolutely working at tip top uh, in a very difficult situation. So. 
I, I look forward to, to meeting on these issues over the next uh, month, two months, three months, whatever we're looking at here for the new normal. Um, anyone else? Then why don't we go ahead and vote? I have had it suggested that it would make it really easier on the recorder if we would do a roll call so she can track how we're voting. So uh, do you want to run a roll call vote on us? Sure, I can do that. All right, Kayser. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Nanke. Aye. Leung. Aye. Osik. Aye. Hoy. Aye. Nordyke? Aye. Lewis? Aye. And Bennett? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, let me just look. Mayor, if I may. Yes. Uh, to to uh, add on to several of the excellent comments from councils regarding uh, helping our, our nonprofit community, as they are so critically vital in Salem to helping us, helping the community provide services to those in need. Also, if as you talk with uh, your constituents, as you as you talk with others, please uh, discourage uh, 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 donations to individuals who are unsheltered on the streets. Uh, that is one reason why there have been concentrations uh, of individuals is because they do receive donations, and and if we can discourage that. Uh, uh, through the cooperation of our residents, that would be much appreciated. Okay. Any further comment? Then we are adjourned. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah.